Hi, it's Matt with GregRegisterSEO.com, and today I'm going to talk about seven ruthlessly manipulative techniques grifters use to get you to click on any headline. But before I go on and explain all about the grifters, I would like to ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the button below. Okay, the title is a bit over the top, I realize it, but I'm doing it to make a point. The title, the headline of your ad, of your YouTube video, of your blog post, of your article is the most important part of your entire text. Because if people don't click on this title, they're never going to see your content, no matter what it is. So you have to get them to click on the, the headline and the title. And there are specific techniques for doing this. And I'm going to run down some of these techniques. These aren't all the techniques, but these are some of them. And like I said, this is so important because the headline is the first thing you see. You know, you're competing with a lot of ads out there. You're competing for people's attention. And you've got to do everything you can to make sure that you get their your attention. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, sometimes what advertising source you're using. I mean, it does matter. If you don't have a compelling headline and you use a really good advertising source, you know, it's wasted. So this is something you should be putting a lot of thought and time into and becoming very good at. So here is one technique that is used. I know, have you ever seen these, these blog posts, like seven ways to make money from home, five ways to lose weight quickly. These are list type posts, posts, and they use a number and a number is like word candy like brain candy somehow we can focus in on a number i mean i know i click on them i click on these posts that say 10 ways to do this seven ways to do that because it's organized you say okay i'm gonna learn something i'm gonna get some quick tips on how to do something so in an organized way our brain automatically focuses in on it and there's something about the number seven too. I mean, I like the number seven. It's kind of a magic number. People tend to want to click on it. And if you put too many numbers, it's overwhelming. Like if you have a thousand and one ways to do uh, whatever, you know, people are a little less likely to click on that than just something simple. And this is something that has been tested over and over again. See, a number is catchier than a word all by itself. And like I said, small numbers are more easily accepted. And here's another thing. Odd numbers are more credible than even numbers. So try to use an odd number within your headline and you'll generally find that you have better luck. Number two, give compelling reasons for people to click on your content. Did you know that most People share content and they don't even read beyond the headline. That's how important the headline is. So if you have something in your, t your headline, like tips, reasons, lessons, tricks, ideas, ways, principles, facts, secrets, strategies, you're giving people practical reasons to share your content and, or to read your content. You know, here's some examples, you know, I'm going to use the numbers with this as well. So we're doubling up on this, so, you know, five tips on how to write irresistible headlines, even if you're barely literate. Seven lessons I learned the hard way while hitchhiking through Northeast Afghanistan. 17 universal principles agreed upon by the world's best copywriters. Nine legal facts. See, I'm using the word facts or five secret strategies. I'm gonna learn strategies if I read this article. I'm gonna learn some facts. I'm gonna learn some principles, lessons, tips. These are all practical and you're giving people compelling reasons to click on and or to share your content. This next one is super important. Get their attention. Like I said before, you're competing with thousands of other articles, blogs, videos, and advertisements. Your headline has to grab the attention and curiosity of your reader. And you've got to get them to click it and read the first sentence. Generally, if you get them to read the first sentence, then they're going to, you, you got them. They're going to be, read the rest or, you know, as much as they want. You, you have their attention. And here's some additional tips. Make the title unique. 
be super specific, create a sense of urgency and provide valuable practical information. Okay, I'm going to use a, an example about being specific. All right. I could have easily said with my headline, you know, seven techniques used to get anybody to click on any headline. All right. I added some more emotional keywords. We're going to get those to a second, but if I wanted to really get specific, say my market was the self-improvement motivational market. I could say seven ruthlessly manipulative techniques. Again, this is a bit over the top. Uh, Tony Robbins uses to get you to click on any headline. Now, if I'm in that niche, the self-help, um, you know, type of niche, self-improvement, you know, everyone's thinking about Tony Robbins. He's like the most popular, or one of the most popular people in that market. And so I'm definitely targeting my market when I'm doing that. I'm just talking about a specific person. And the reason I'm talking about that person is because that's my niche and that's who my audience is. So I know that this is going to appeal to my audience. So as specific as you can get to your audience, the better. N a next way we can get someone's attention is by using a sense of urgency. I don't know if you've ever been on Amazon and you've shot for something and it says only three left in stock. If you're considering getting this, you know, Samsung Galaxy Book Pro, you've been thinking about it. Maybe now it's time to pull the trigger since there's only three left in stock. You don't want to get free shipping and, and so forth. So that is what you call creating a sense of urgency. In my headline that I use for this blog post, I could say this information is only going to be available for 24 hours only, then I'm going to take it down. That is creating a sense of urgency and that definitely works. Another way to get people's attention, and it's good if you can combine all these methods, is to offer something very practical and useful for your audience. Now, I went and looked at some of my blog, uh, my blog, my email broadcast to see which ones were opened the most. And two of the winners were when I sent out, sent out an email blast three new free classified ad submitters. Just that simple title actually got a lot of opens, right? Now, you, when you look at it, okay, I've got the numbers. I've got a, a very simple number that people can get wrap their head around. And I'm offering classified ad submitters so software that submits ads on autopilot. And I'm offering it for free. And there's no catch. It's not, it's not an upgrade. It's, you know, at least not now. Uh, and people jumped on it. They really loved it. Another one was... OSClass submitter updated submits to 19 high, high traffic sites on autopilot. So let's look at this one. First of all, I'm talking about a specific software and a lot of my, uh, my audience knows about this software and I put updated in here. Now I could have put it updated 2022, something like that. And that might've been even better. Put another number in there and let it know why, because I know a lot of people in my audience maybe already have the software, but don't have the updated version or with, are familiar with it. But think, oh, I've seen this before, but I want to know, want them to know this is new. So I pack that into the title and then I'm being specific. It goes to 19 high traffic sites. I didn't just put 19 sites, I put high traffic sites and I let them know it's going to be odd done automatically. So there's a lot of packed of, of things packed in here. First of all, it's specific to my audience. Secondly, it's super useful. It's software that's going to promote their ad to 19 high traffic sites. And it's going to do it automatically. So these really worked to get the attention of my readers to open, you know, open the email. So you might want to think, how can I incorporate titles like this using this technique, headlines like this, using these techniques for my headlines. Number four is flag the reader. What do I mean by that? It's when I call you out. I said, when you, when I say seven ways you can learn to write irresistible headlines quickly, I'm talking to you directly. I'm speaking to you directly. And this time I like to say, if you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> Usually I don't say that too much, but again, that's an example. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you directly. And when someone speaks to you directly, you're more likely to engage and get involved. So if you can put you in there as well and call out the reader, you're going to have some better luck getting people to click on your headline.
Number five is get emotional. If you can arouse the emotion of your reader, they're way more likely to click on your title. And you can do this with what they call power keywords. The, the power keywords are words that evoke emotion, you know, heartwarming, inspiring, profound, zen, alive, light, healthy, even sadness, alarming, crushing, dead, deceptive, devastating, gravity, gargantuan, gigantic, um, exclusive exclusivity. You know, we've got a whole list here. This is from Sumo and you can, if you click the link below, you can go to this blog post and then click here on the blog post and you could download an entire 401 plus list of these power words from the website website. You join their newsletter and you can get this, uh, in PDF format printed out if you want. So you have these power keywords ready to use in your headlines. Now there's a warning with this and I kind of broke the rule with my headline is that, you know, power words really charge your headlines with emotional energy and you can overdo it. All right. And I definitely kind of did overdid it with, with my title because headline, because I'm really not talking about grifters. I'm talking about, but grifters, you know, inspires, uh, curiosity, you know, it, it's controversial. You know, it, I did it really as hyperbole and to make a point because that's the subject of this blog post. Normally, you know, I probably wouldn't go quite that over the top. Uh, I would, you know, because if you go over, over the top and you have no credibility, uh, with your audience, that's not good either. So you have to use it judiciously. You know, here's some good examples, you know, seven ridiculous techniques I use to get rid of writer's blocks, five odd copywriting techniques, uh, used by lazy writers. Should I feel guilty by divulging these three highly controversial copywriting tricks? See, those words, guilty, controversial, lazy, odd, ridiculous, they evoke emotion. And there are many more words that do so. You could be a student of that and learn. Number six, name dropping and trend search searching surfing. Who are the most respected and popular people in your niche? All right. You want to get in their world. Again, I use the Tony Robbins example, you know, but if I was in the personal improvement niche, you know, I might try to incorporate him in some titles. That has to be done in a legitimate way, but it's okay. You know, you could do reviews of people, other people's products in your niche, big name people. Uh, maybe you can even eventually do an interview with them. That's really good. You want to try to get attached to them. And if you can get some blog posts where you, maybe you talk about them and give some pros and cons about what you learned from them, you're, you're feeding off their popularity and name. Uh, you're kind of siphoning off their energy, you know, and it's kind of, I think it's fair as long as it's giving value to the reader and they're learning something and you're learning something and it's promoting them as well. You might be able to actually have some good cross promotional opportunities, but you know, with certain people, there is a lot of juice just in their name. So if you can incorporate, you know, maybe some of the most respected people in the headlines in a way that makes sense and a way that's positive, um, that can be a really good technique for getting people to click. You know, so it doesn't necessarily always have to be positive, uh, but it's probably better off. It is, you know, if, if you did a review of a product and you didn't like it and you could say it, but it, it's generally better to go in the, in the positive direction with that. Um, so you could say something like, don't buy Tony's Robbins course until you read this. That is a very popular one to do. And you're going to say, well, gee, I was thinking of buying that, but maybe I better read this blog post first. That's just an example of what you could do. And that kind of fits in to number seven and you've using formulas say you really don't know what to do <laughs> you're skunked right? you've got some of the other techniques there's kind of some other tricks like there's the little known ways of formula if you put in like in a list post seven little known ways to make your whole line, headlines hilarious five little known secrets three little known lessons a lot of times this is used in the health or weight loss you know, uh, industries such as, um, you know, seven little known secrets on losing weight, et cetera, et cetera. But this comes to the next one actually, which is used a lot in the weight loss arena and health arena is the get rid of formula. Your formulas are kind of like cliches, right? But they work. 
So as you could say how to get rid of your weak headlines and write headlines that convert, how to get rid of your lousy headlines once and for all. A lot of times it would be how to get rid of your wrinkles <laughs> once and for all. When you talk about getting rid of something that's very powerful and that gets people to click. So, you know, you can review all these points and try to incorporate them into your headline writing. And the most important thing is stop and take some time to write good headlines. It is not wasted time. It is the most important part of your content because if they don't click on your headline, they're not going to, they're not going to see any of your content. I'm going to put the link to this blog post right in the description below. Here it is. And if you like it, please like, share, uh, let everyone know about it, bookmark it so you can come back to it as a, as a reference. You can print it out if you want, if that helps you. Also, would like to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. We're going to be coming out with more posts like this. Actually, my next video is going to be about, about the same topic. It's going to be about headlines from spammers and marketers that I couldn't resist clicking. I couldn't resist. Like, I've been collecting them for a number of months. You know, so you could really learn a lot that way. Uh, I've looked at some headlines that just kind of got me. I had to click on them. I said, these are pretty good. I need to maybe figure out a way to use these for myself. So my next video, uh, which will be at the end of this video, you can go right into it and also put it in the description below. I'll be uh, talking about, you know, how I got had. So, Thank you so much. This is Matthew May with QuickRegisterSEO.com. I'll be talking to you later.